separation from. Subversion of what? The Bible. From. from instead of of. Oh. Right. What is an actual? Part of the Russian Constitution? I know that one. For us, it's a little different. You said it goes back to Jefferson. It's a letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote when he got questioned about, well, what church is the United States going to be? Because if you remember our history, which most of this folk here are going to remember that, but the generations that are in the schools, no clue. Before the United States, if we were England, Church of England, exactly, we mandated religion. The, the country mandated this is the religion that you follow, the Church of England. And it actually wasn't even the king that was the head. The king always went to the head of the Church of England. And so when the founders went and created this country, they said, no, we're not going to do that, because we saw it happen. So it comes here, Thomas Jefferson wrote, the difference between church and state, it's actually the separation, yes. Very simply, the United States is not going to have a single church. For simple. We can have 8,000 churches in the United States, and we probably do have it. <laughs> and they're not going to support a single church. That's all it is. So when anybody comes back here and says, Church is state, Church is state, Church is state, it's nothing what they're saying. It's only, when it's taken, you're going to back one church. So, separation of Church is state is an excuse why we're not supposed to be doing it. It's not true. Christians and Hebrews shouldn't be involved in government. That's another one that you hear, right? We shouldn't be involved in government. False. We only have one king. So we shouldn't prop up Biden. Well, he might be propped up sometimes. <laughs> That's a completely different story. Or we shouldn't prop up Trump. Or whoever we put him in. Right? Because we're only supposed to have one king, and our king is God appoints the kings and rulers. So why should we be involved? That's the thought, right? We shouldn't be involved because we'll get a point. So what's the point? And my favorite? How much have you heard of that? Right? And, and not just in the church, right? <laughs> So we're, we're, we're going to go over all of these. Not today, we're going to go over all of these. Where do we go for answers? Now no shrub of the field 
was yet on the earth, and no plant of the field was yet sprouted, for the Lord God had not sent rain upon the earth, and there was no man to cultivate the ground. Which is interesting when you think about it. Because right before that, he had just gone through and listed all the days created each and every section of this planet, right? And yet, he says, no plant of the field is sprouted. So what happens is he goes, it's just, there's no man that's cultivated the ground. So they go a little further down. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and to keep it. If I'm not mistaken, that's our second command from God. The first being, be fruitful and multiply. Second, cultivate and keep the ground. Now what can that mean? Keep the garden. 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 Or, oh, look at this. To manage the garden. Oh. <laughs> David was one step ahead of me on that one. To manage the garden. <laughs> right that first <laughs> So, what is the garden in today's world? What is the garden? Fred Myers. Fred the garden in Fred Myers. You get caught your tongue. His creation. The world around us. He created the world around us for us to cultivate and keep it. Okay, so the following question is. How do we manage the garden today? That's how that's how we tend the world today. Are we doing it well as a people? <coughs> swamp, yes. Yeah. It really has become the swamp, right? So, if we follow what Genesis 2 tells us, we really should be involved in the government of politics because everything has changed. We don't live in just a giant garden any longer, the concrete jungle, right? And so it's changed a little bit, but our, our second command hasn't changed in all of this. It hasn't changed. It's just what has changed is how we manage. In that method of that. So, does that mean that Rick needs to run for city mayor? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Does Robin need to run for governor? Yeah. So I've got some envelopes here to hand out. <laughs> So yes, some of us are going to be called to run for different positions. So does that mean that Ben is off the hook? No! <laughs> what, what else could Ben be doing? Both. Uh, citizen lobbyist. Citizen lobbyist? Campaign manager. Campaign manager? <laughs> <laughs> City council. School board. School board. But just because we're, we're filling these other positions, there's too many people here for all the available positions, right? Well, in our certain areas, yes. Right? Okay. <laughs> but what else can we be doing? Pray. 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 Yeah. Patience. Uh, 
Notice this little slide here. I picked it up because to me it represented the tree of life. Bare sheet means in the beginning. Okay, so in the beginning we have life. And life is being given to us by the one who speaks light into the world. Are you with me? We have life because light speaks in. And when we look at this thing, I want you to understand that there are some gifts that were given to us from Yahweh. Life, home, 
purpose, and companionship. Each one of these has to deal with how we're going to respond to the garden. If you remembered anything from what Aaron was talking about, I hope that you remember to manage the garden. garden. Yeah, manage the garden. But we have to also learn, if we listen to many other sorts of people, is if we don't learn to manage our life, our hope, our purpose, and our companionship, it's going to be hard for you to manage the garden. So let's break down each one of these. Life. Here's the text for you. This is it. I broke down each one of these in chapter 2. Yahweh formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath, the breath of life. And man became a if you are alive, then you will speak life. If you are alive, you will speak life because you have been given life. It's for the thank you. That's what it said. We were created to have life. You're called to experience life. And Yahweh has given this life to you, so use it to your fullest. Thank you, Yahweh, daily for your breath. Your life has meaning, and life is not by chance. Who should you be thanking for every day that you wake up? Yahweh. Because he's given you a life to live. There's a reason why you're here. So even in the midst of what's going on right now, and it is going on, some parents are learning to speak up life. They're standing up in front of their school boards. They're speaking out loud, and they're saying, let me read the book to you that is in our children's curriculum. And you would be amazed what are in those books. Yeah. It is profanity to its worst extent. If you, we have been given life, we have been asked to praise the Father and then give life back. Home. Oh. I found this text really interesting. And Yahweh planted a garden toward the east, and even there he placed the man whom he formed. What's so important about home? A home, if it has peace, beauty, and harmony, then you will be strengthened. Yahweh took man and gave him a home. He put him in a home. Are we putting ourselves in a home or are we putting ourselves in chaos? We must protect the home. Parents with children, get rid of chaos. Those of us who have allowed the world to come into our life and have crippled us, then he's asked us to get rid of that because it's no longer peaceful in the home. It happens to all of us. As I was praying with Angie this morning, I found out that I was carrying way too much weight of the world on me. It was affecting me spiritually, emotionally, and physically. I had to ask God for forgiveness. Because I was carrying the weight of what I see in this world, the devastation, and it's ruining my heart. And I want to put that at bay. So Yahweh planted the garden toward the east, and even there he formed the man who he formed. Let's look at the next gift that he gave us. He gave us the gift of what? Purpose. Yahweh took the man and put him in the garden to cultivate it and to keep it. That's management. Management. That's your purpose. That's our purpose. We have purpose. Amen. Say that. I have purpose. Believe it. Yes, sir. <laughs> if you are at loss of purpose, then now is the time to get on your knees and ask Yahweh, Yahweh, show me your job that you have for me to do. Give me purpose. And it could be something as simple as learning to talk to your neighbors, as Aaron was talking to you about. It could be something learning to talk to your spouse, your friends, anyone, but you've been given a purpose. Wow. What's the next one? I know this is a tough one. Some of you, many of you are not married. I couldn't believe it. when I looked at this congregation, this particular fellowship, Half of us are without spouses. Yeah. Do you have companionship? <laughs> We're tempted to say no. We're tempted to say no. Is this companionship? Yes. yes. A true friend is a friend who lays down his life for another. If you are not married, I want you. 
to form a companionship with someone that you can share the most intimate details of your life with. Seek them out. Ask Yahweh to bring a friend into your life that is your companion. And guess what? He is your greatest lover. So you have a chance still. You are not without companionship. The only time that we're without companionship is when we discard Him. That's the only time. Just remember this. You're meant not to be alone. Seeking the blessing from Yahweh with all your heart is the most important thing to do for companionship and then guarding the companionship. How do we guard the companionship? By throwing no one under the bus. Amen. That is not your privilege. You do not get to disregard somebody, their reputation, their innermost being, their thoughts, and their purpose. That's not up to you. You get to lift them up, you never get to tear them down. Never. Let's look at the last one. So we have four gifts, right? What are they? Life. Life. What? Purpose. Seek out those gifts because they're right there for you in the beginning in the sheet. All right, so what's the problem? Sin's the problem. Sin is the problem. And sin is what breaks us down. It gets us discouraged. It doesn't let us go into politics. Paul quoted politics to the soldiers. He said, I'm going to quote you Roman law. Do you know U.S. law? No. Kind of? David, Daniel, Esther, Moses, Joseph, all were involved in politics. Satan wants to discourage you. How does he do it? Let's break it down. <laughs> you just stay under your little hat, cute little cat. Don't go out into the big meat world. It's terrible out there. Just stay home and be super safe. Okay? You'll be okay. <laughs> I don't want to go out there, it's scary. <laughs> Bring it. Bring it. Why number one from Hasatan? It's okay to talk with a false god and to consider his breath of knowledge. Look at that ear and hear this. Yahweh gives breath of life. Satan believes he gets breath to make you feel better about yourself. Right. Big difference. Turn off his breath. Don't listen to him. As soon as he speaks, shut him down. That means if something is coming into your home and you're believing it, you're listening to it, shut off. Just like that. The serpent said to the woman, indeed, it's God. Said, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden. Notice how sly that is. Anytime that the laws of Yahweh are questioned, what are you going to do with it? Shut it down. So that's how you're going to defeat lie number one. Let's go to lie number two. I'm anxious to see it. It's more important to feed your ego rather than prepare a home for others. Remember, the second gift was a home, yes? But how do you prepare a home if you've got an ego going on? If it's all about you, your home ain't working. God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. You might think you know more than your spouse. You might think you know more than somebody else within the fellowship. Check it out first. Don't listen to that. Satan, get behind me. Satan, get behind me. Do not allow his breath to come close to this ear. Do not take on line number two. What is line number three? I'm kind of curious. <laughs> <laughs> we need to hide from Yahweh because we've said no why we must run. Notice what happens in chapter 2. God called the man and said, Where are you? Where are you? And they go, I'm over here hiding. <laughs> the little child is hiding away from Yahweh. Really? Is that what he wants you to do? 
King gifts. King David was a man after Yah's heart, who implies that he ran towards Yahweh when he sinned. If we deny the Creator to restore us, if we deny Him to pull us out of our hiding place, we lose our purpose. We cannot have purpose if we're hiding. And we don't listen to Yahweh calling you out and saying, I want you to go do this for me. And you're busy feeling so guilty over your sin. You haven't laid it on the altar. You haven't confessed it. And you're still feeling guilt for it. Just lay it. Confess it. Be restored. Be restored. Like lie number four. I'm kind of curious what this one is. Blame someone else for your problems, especially the one closest to you. Isn't that amazing? All outlined in prayer sheets, all four of these lines. Mm -hmm. The woman you gave us to me, she gave me from the tree and I ate. That's the blame game. Someone else caused me to sin. Someone else caused me to think like this. Someone else made this problem for me. No. <laughs> Sorry to wake you up. You're it. <laughs> All right? I'm it. Take ownership. That will allow you to find life again. That will allow you to find your home again. It will allow you to find purpose again. Just own it. It's okay. We will be okay in this life. When you guys go over the Midrash today, I want you to be really excited about it because it's going to open you up to the restoration of the Messiah. I'm not going to basically go over these with you. I want you to read things. I want you to challenge this. Isaiah 42, 5 to 7, you're going to see the promise of the covenant for your eyes to be opened, all the way back to the Old Testament. The promise of the covenant. What's the covenant? Yeshua the Messiah will die for our sins and restore us back to the kingdom. That's the covenant. I'm promising you that. In John, we get to see the next one. The covenant was made flesh to defeat darkness and shine light into the world of sin. That's the, that's the purpose that's falling through the covenant. Okay, when we have that covenant, we'll have strength to shine light into this world's darkness, which is corrupted. We need that strength to move forward like what Aaron's talking to you about. Revelation 22 proclaims that she has returned as king, and to make all things new to feed the nations with the tree of life. It's circular. From the beginning, Bereshit, to the end. The tree of life will be restored. That's our hope. Yes. If you are experiencing depression, if you're experiencing confusion, if you're experiencing hopelessness right now because of what you see in this world, do not. Do not because you've been given purpose. Yahweh has restored you through the tree of life. He's restored you through the black covenant that he's made for you. He will never forsake you or leave you. Amen. What our job is to do is show me the way, Lord, that you have for me in this earth right now. Give me that purpose. Give me the strength I need. Allow my mind to be open towards your word. Give me the strength to read boring constitutional stuff. Okay? Know the word. And then know what other words come from. And when you're able to speak with strength, then those around you respect that strength. We don't have to be angry. We just say, have you read this? I have the right. I have this God-given right to speak. I have it. And I expect you to respect it. It's pretty basic. How fun in Midrash. You guys have been having a blast. Okay, open up the word, digest it, talk about real things. How is life really affecting you? And how can you take these things and have life, whole, purpose? How can you defeat the lies of Satan? So when you walk out of this place, you've got the full armor of God on, and you're ready to speak into this world life as power heads. Father God, I thank you. Thank you for this life that you've given us right now. Thank you, Father, for the purpose that you've given us. You've given us all this all the way back into the beginning. 
Father, we've lost this belief. Please reinstill it in us so that we are no longer a weak vessel, but we're a strong vessel in you and you alone. So, Father, we thank you. We praise your name. We lift you on high. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Shabbat shalom, you guys. Be super blessed.